do a sort of stand up at the Edinburgh Festival. What do you want to do that for? I said, well, it's on my bucket list. You know, the list of things I must do before I die. She said, oh, you mean like decorating the back bedroom? I said, well, that's kind of on my bucket list, but it's not the top of my bucket list. I said, this is unfulfilled ambitions. Because where this come from was um, 30 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I wanted to be in show business. And uh, at those days, um, there wasn't the Edinburgh Festival as it is today. There was no opportunity to go and just do something out there. And uh, So the only place you'd get a little time to be on a microphone in front of an audience would be to do a talent show. And I used to do talent shows where I lived in the east end of London. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm a cockney <laughs> From the east end of London, like Dick Van Dyke. And um, <laughs> is he from the, I think he is from the east end of London. Anyway, we used to do these, these talent shows. And uh, I used to enter them, and I never won. I never, ever won. It was always somebody uh, singing The Power of Love. Uh, the, uh, the Power of Love. And, woof, off they went. and as I, when I was in these talent shows, there was also another young comedian. Uh, a crazy guy. He went into them as well, and he never won either. Uh, he would get on stage and he'd run about and he'd sweat all the time. Ah, ah, sort of like crazy guy. And uh, I used to be exhausted just looking at him. And he never won. Uh, Lee Evans never got anywhere near it, you see. <laughs> and so we're both two uh, sort of hopeless comics. But one night, you see, they say this that every comedian or every performer has a day, and I had my day. I, had, uh, I won. I won this, this competition. I won a fiver. I know, yes, it meant I could get a bus home. It was fabulous. So I had this five pound note and I felt like the doors of opportunity just opened up for me. I thought this is terrific. From here, stardom is just going to be around the corner. And I went back to the dressing room. Well, I say a dressing room, it was a toilet really, a men's toilet. Yeah, I was playing a wee room then and I'm playing a wee room now. <laughs> and and uh, I was getting my stuff together and there was a knock on the door. And I opened this door and it was Lee Evans standing there, you see. And I said, hello, Lee, what, what can I do for you? He said, I just come by to say, well done. He said, I think you did great. I said, well, that's really, really nice of you because we don't normally sort of praise each other up because we've got a competition. I said, that's very, very civil of you. Thank you, I, I, I appreciate that. He said, yes, he said, they don't like me here. He said, I, I'm not getting any laughs at all. He said, it's terrible. He said, to be honest, I'm thinking about chucking it all in. I said, no. He said, yes, he said, I've had enough of it. He said, I'm going to give it one last chance. I'm going to go to the Edinburgh Festival where they appreciate new comedy and see how I get on. If that doesn't work out, I'm going to go and drive a bus or do something else in my life, but I'm not going to stay as a comedian. So I said, well, that's, uh, that's a shame, Lee, but I wish you all the best at the Edinburgh Festival and uh, maybe we'll catch you again at some point. He said, well, good night, bye-bye. He went back to walk off and I suddenly thought, hold on a minute, you know what? I should give this boy some advice. I mean, after all, I know what I'm talking about now. I've won the fiver. I've won a comedy. I need to pass this information over. It would be only fair to do that. So I said to him, Lee, come back here. Come here. I put my arm around him, give him a little supportive cuddle. I said, Lee, look, do you want some advice? He said, oh, yeah, okay. I said, look, this style you've got, it's a style that's wrong. I said, you're running around like a lunatic. You're sweating. Uh, it, it's manic. People don't know what they're looking at. They're getting all confused. We're exhausted just watching you perform. That's the end. So you've got to stop that. That's my advice to you. Don't do that. He said, oh, don't do that. I said, no, no. What you need to do is you need to watch the comedy greats, the legends of our business. I said, look at Bernard Manning. I said, you wouldn't get Bernard Manning running up and down, sweating profusely, general. No, Bernard doesn't do that. Bernard takes his time. He relaxes. He tells a joke. And then he waits. He leans on that mic stand. And he waits. And he might wait all day, but he'll wait to have the audience laugh. And that's what you have to do. You have to get your timing right and do that. He said, OK, I'll, I'll think about that. I'll think about that. I don't think I'm Bernard Manning, he said, but I'll have a go, maybe, I think. And off he went. And I never saw him for five years. And during that time, five years, my career didn't really take off. In fact, it went into oblivion. And it went into deeper oblivion, and it ended up in total oblivion. And I did, to end, make ends meet, what a lot of people in our business do, I did extra work. Now, does anybody, do you know what extra work is? Because some people, yeah, I'm sure you do. It's the crowd scenes, you know, when they want a crowd for a TV show or just someone walking by, that's what we did. It was on, you know, just every day. And I did loads of it. 
I was very successful at it. I was, um, I was a pervert in EastEnders. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was. And uh, I was also in a TV show called The Bill. Does anybody remember The Bill TV show? Well, you might remember that The Bill used to start off with someone walking down the road, two policemen, a police lady and a policeman, and he's walking down the road, da 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 They just used to look at their feet. These are the feet of The Bill, the famous feet. Yes! That was me. I did that, and I'd also do other old jobs, you know. And one day, I was at Thames Television at Teddington doing a program called Shelley. I don't know if you remember that, because uh, it goes back a few years. Hugh Bennett, the actor Hugh Bennett used to be in that. A little comedy program. And I was man on park bench or something like that. And uh, I was doing that, and they broke for lunch, and I went to the canteen. I'm queuing up the canteen with my tray, waiting to get served. And I looked down the line, and I could see somebody. I thought, I recognise that, that, that figure. Well, I thought, that's Lee Evans. That's Lee Evans. Obviously, the Edinburgh Festival didn't work out for him. I thought, oh, just because you like to know what, how bad somebody else is doing sometimes, don't you? You just like to know that you're not doing the very worst. You wouldn't find out what they're doing. Said, Lee! I said, Lee! He said, oh, oh, it's Joe! Oh, hello, Joe! I said, Lee, do you get a table, have a sit down, and we'll have a chat about the old days and see what you do? Yes! So I've got the table, and he come and joined me. And we sat there. He said, what's happening to you? I said, Lee, I've got to be honest with you. I said, it's gone terribly wrong, terribly wrong. I said, I haven't had a job for ages. I've ended up doing extra work as a full-time job. I've been a pervert in EastEnders. Uh, these are the feet of the bill. And uh, I said, um, today I'm a, I'm a man on a park bench in Shelley. He went, oh. I said, I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm thinking about chucking it all in. And I had enough of it. I said, how's things with you? What are you doing here? He said, I'm doing the Lee Evans show. <laughs> I said, you don't need any extras to your Lee Evans show. <laughs>